Hey, my name's Nate Green, and today we're going to be reviewing Horizon Zero Dawn, the video game whose title was decided by the company Scrabble Tournament. You might be asking, didn't this come out in February? And the answer is yes. Yes, it did. So why review it? Well, not only because I just got around to playing it, but because I don't think it's the instant classic the rest of the internet makes it out to be. Is it good? Absolutely. Great even. But it has some significant flaws. Flaws that kind of marred the whole experience for me and had me walking away asking why the world was so in love with it. Because this is apparently a debate online I never knew about until right now. Yes, I did play Breath of the Wild before Horizon. And I did a pretty good job of being objective for this review. But bias, as we all know, is a real son of a bitch. So now I went in being as objective as possible when I played Horizon. But just because I'm not drooling all over it doesn't mean I've been corrupted by Breath of the Wild. They're two completely different games outside of the open worldliness of them both. And they're hardly comparable. So with that out of the way, and hopefully good enough to end that line of discussion, here we go. Horizon was developed by Guerrilla Games, the same studio behind the Killzone series and 2004 seminal classic Shellshock Non-67. Horizon takes place a thousand years in the future after a mysterious apocalypse you naturally assume is robots, and I wonder why. Alright, so after the robot apocalypse, humanity reverted back to tribal territories, and you get to play as Aloy, the only redhead on the planet, and a woman who was cast out of her tribe, called the Nora, at birth and sentenced to grow up outside the village as a pariah. She was also super conveniently trained from birth to be a mega badass, which eventually sets her on the path to find out why she was cast out, who her parents are, and generally what the fuck is up with the world. Yada, yada, yada. It's pretty by the numbers. Because Horizon's been out so long, and I assume everyone who's going to play it has, I'm not really going to be shy about spoilers, especially because I feel like there's nothing to spoil. Nearly every plot development was obvious, and the ones that weren't were mostly just unimpressive. Which is fine! You don't have to have a revolutionary plot, especially if you have strong characters and character development. Unfortunately, we only get the strong characters. And I'm not even talking about strong within the narrative. I mean, we just have literally a bunch of physically and emotionally strong characters who bounce back from any tragedy after a mourning period that lasts anywhere from 30 seconds to a full minute, depending on how much dialogue you skip. And that brings me to the first and most egregious problem with Horizon, which I've already been harping on for... What, a couple minutes? None of the characters in it have a character arc. Take main character Aloy, for example. As the heroine, she's bound to grow and change throughout the story, right? Or at the very least, run up against a foe or situation that makes her challenge her beliefs, right? Well, no. We don't get any of that. The Aloy at the beginning of the story is the same Aloy we get at the end. Hell, she might actually be worse considering the hundreds of people she's brutally murdered over the course of the game. It's the Nathan Drake problem all over again. The hero becomes almost worse than the villain due to the sheer magnitude of blood on their hands. And in this case, I think it's actually worse than Drake, since moral dilemmas are actually presented to Aloy, and you by extension, a bunch of times. Like, a several minimum. Several times. Which all fall completely flat because of just how well, unconcerned with morality Aloy is. The outsider looking in angle is great and all, but it also removes nearly every motivation Aloy has that isn't purely selfish, and that makes her really, really boring as a character. Even side characters stagnate, with the notable exception of Eren, who presumably stops being an alcoholic after a side quest. But that's it. The villains are entirely one-dimensional, by design I might add, because the big bad is an evil AI doing exactly what it was programmed to do, and its human servant is a villain from an 80s Schwarzenegger action flick, complete with tragic family death backstory. Actually, scratch that. Hellas is more someone out of a Van Damme shit show. Time cop, this is not. The only character who is remotely interesting, who is Silence, is similarly one note. Having someone openly admit to their willingness to betray you the second your interests don't align and then having them follow through with the threat and actually betray you makes them as compelling as a character as someone who tells you in no uncertain terms, hey, I'm going to eat this soup. And, and, then, and then they eat the soup. Fascinating. Something Horizon did right in regards to the plot audio logs. The story that takes place before and leading up to the end of the world is fantastic. The audio logs tell us the story of the people responsible for the end of the world and ultimately the story of those same people saving it. Every single person we get the privilege of listening to is genuinely interesting. Not all logs are created the same, however. Any that you find laying around in the overworld are more or less the same. 
They all tease Project Zero Dawn without actually telling you what Zero Dawn is, and that's for good reason. The overworld logs are from soldiers on the front line and losing war against what's essentially an invincible army of machines. They don't know any more about Zero Dawn than we as players do. It's only when Aloy ventures into the few outposts that actually housed Zero Dawn that we get some answers. Even the plot revelations from these logs are kinda ho-hum, but it's the people talking that make the difference. Most, if not all of these people, were far more compelling characters than our heroes, and honestly, I would have rather played a game starring them over what we have here at Horizon. One thing I have to openly praise as much as I possibly can is the voice acting. It's some of the best out there, and Ashley Burch shines as Aloy, and the rest of the cast is equally as memorable. The acting in Horizon is just top fucking notch, and I couldn't find a problem with it at all, and believe me, I tried. So yes, I didn't like the story. Not like there's much of one to dislike, but I'm obviously not a fan of what little is there. It's by far the weakest element of Horizon, and I genuinely expected more, though it's not like Killzone ever had a really killer narrative, so I'm not exactly sure what I was even thinking. Story issues aside, Horizon is one of the most gorgeous games I've ever played. Full stop. Everything from the character animations to the slight swaying of the grass and the wind, everything is animated in an extraordinarily high quality here. I would say I'm impressed, but I'm still picking my jaw up off the ground. I mean, it's, it's, it's not flawless, though. There's a number of odd facial animation issues with Aloy that I noticed during conversations with most of the characters where she never fully opens her mouth to say anything and just kind of lightly flaps her lips blandly and the rest of her face just kind of sits there, either with janky animations or seemingly none at all. Some characters are better done than others, but I will say that any character with a beard is particularly bad looking. The beards in Horizon seriously look like high school theater costuming. I could practically smell the spirit gum coming off the screen. Now I know, I know, Nate, you're being so negative about this, and to that I say I'll stop my bitching when this fantastic game has nothing for me to bitch about. But that's enough about that. I really did like Horizon, otherwise I wouldn't have finished it in certain New Game Plus, which is exactly what it sounds like. Unless you jack up the difficulty, you're still playing the same game over again, but as an overpowered monster. I'll get through New Game Plus eventually, probably when I feel like playing Horizon again in a few months and I might follow this up with a New Game Plus review. I don't know. I, who the fuck knows what I'm going to do. That being said, the combat of Horizon is borderline perfect. Killing the robots of Aloy's future Earth is incredibly addictive and endlessly entertaining as you get better at targeting their weak spots and learning to properly use the weapons and traps you have available to you. I was constantly getting sidetracked on the way to a mission by stumbling on a herd of robots that I just kind of felt like killing, which actually got me ahead in some of the boss fights later on since every robot is available to kill in the wild, with the exception of one specific story-limited robot. So when some robots are first introduced as bosses, you'll find plenty later on to fight just out there in the wild. Eventually, in a welcome shakeup, the robots get upgraded to have their weak spots armored, which is a real set of a bitch when it came out of nowhere. I mean, it could have been triggered by reaching a specific level or story flag, but I'm not sure, and I, I dig it. So, fuck it. Alright, so up till now, I've shat all over the story, and yeah, somewhat on some animation issues, but this is the first time I'm actually going to shit on some actual gameplay mechanics, just because I either find them dumb, just bad, or otherwise not good at all. I don't You'll You'll see. Th those things are, number one, the health recovery mechanic, because you have to traverse the wilderness to pick up medicinal plants to then put in your health kit, and aside from making the mount system completely pointless if you're low on healing items, which I always was, you can't collect shit while you're on your mountable robot. So while you're on your horse, you, you can't pick up health, and it's annoying, so instead you're running from place to place, always. While healing items are far from scarce, it was, it was annoying. It was really, really annoying to have to find them all the damn time on foot. Problem two is the camera. And I don't know why I put this at number two. Clearly it should be at number one, but bear with me. Because the camera has a tendency to stick behind Aloy wherever it wants to. So instead of the typical over-the-right-shoulder view, it could be over the left shoulder, or straight behind Aloy, or over her right shoulder, seemingly at random, which is just a touch disorienting. It also loves outdoor areas, at least until you get into some kind of enclosed space, be that a bush, a rock, any of the numerous dungeons you'll explore. Honestly, you'll be fighting the camera as much as the fucking robots at times. It's the camera 
freaking out actually killed me a few times. Like, it was annoying, but only sometimes fatal. So it's not a huge deal, but fuck, man. Still. And, okay, and problem three, the world map. I mean, look at it. Sure, you can turn markers on and off, but this is a classic case of too much fucking shit on the world map-itis. 99% of the time, I just wanted to go in and set a waypoint. Somewhere simple. But there's just so much shit in the way. I... I mean, I appreciate the sheer magnitude of stuff to do in the world that we're given, but dear God, Guerrilla Games, not everything needs to be on the world map. Those three issues, along with my story and facial animation problems, make up all that I could find of Horizon's problems. I never had any crashes, I never... no game-breaking bugs, not even a bug that mildly inconvenienced me unless the camera counts, and I'm not sure that it does because it works way too well and shitty. It's like a preconceived shittiness. I'm not sure that it counts. But Horizon is an especially well-done game with a fun take on an old setting, and it has a genuinely relatable and badass protagonist in Aloy, and it knows where its strengths are, combat and visuals. Despite the sound of this review, I really, really did like Horizon. Do I think it deserves the reverence it has? No, not even a little bit. But it is a highly polished, upper-middle-of-the-road experience that doesn't really wear thin by the end of the game, like, kinda sorta a little bit. After, after 35 hours or so in this robot apocalypse world, I felt like I was done. I never had any interest in revisiting it, really. I, I checked out New Game Plus just to see, and I was, I was out. I will, however, definitely be checking out the Frozen Wilds DLC, but I think until then, my time fighting robots and asshole anime AI and even bigger asshole humans has come to an end. But the question here is, should you play it? Yes. Yes, you should. But should you pay full price for it? Absolutely not, especially now. It's been out for like six, eight months. There's no reason to buy this for 60 bucks, wait for a sale. So, do you agree with me? Leave a comment. Do you disagree? Leave a probably kind of shitty comment. And for more on my reviews of all your favorite six month old games, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter at Nate Green Games. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.